has reached epidemic proportions in America. I'm Dr. Paul Christo. This is Aches and Gains. Dr. Paul Christo is one of America's leading experts on relieving pain. He's board-certified, Harvard-trained, and a pain medicine specialist at Johns Hopkins. U.S. News & World Report ranks him as a top doctor and among the top 1% in the nation for pain management. Becker's Review selected him as one of the 70 best pain management physicians in America. He's listed as a super doctor for the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Northern Virginia area. Aches and Gains is a weekly talk show covering all aspects of pain and pain relief. The human impact is real. Older adults, children, and even infants struggle to cope with pain. But there's hope, and there are treatments that can ease pain and suffering. The show offers compelling stories about people who've found relief. We share cutting-edge treatments from contributing experts, and we offer ways to help people cope with their pain. Welcome to the show. Diane Rehm is the well-known host of The Diane Rehm Show. It's a popular news-oriented public radio show that's distributed nationally and internationally by National Public Radio. She's interviewed presidents, Supreme Court justices, artists, and celebrities for nearly 40 years. Diane has been honored with both the Peabody and National Humanities Medal. She and her husband, John Ream, were married for 54 years. He died in 2014 from Parkinson's disease, but his death was prolonged despite his strong wish for help to die comfortably and on his own terms. John refused food, water, and medications, losing his grip on life 10 days later. On today's show, we'll talk about her most recent book, On My Own. Diane shares her deeply personal account of her husband's life, the pain he suffered from Parkinson's disease and spine disease, and her strong belief in the right to choose our own death. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, Teva Pharmaceuticals, The Pain Community, and Boston Scientific. For live online listening to Aches and Gains, please go to paulchristomd.com. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. Diane Rehm has created one of the most admired shows on NPR. She's also been listed as one of Washingtonian Magazine's most powerful women. Diane, welcome to Aches and Gains. Thank you. You've been a prominent voice of public radio for more than 35 years, and you've decided to retire after the 2016 election. Why? To step away from the microphone is how I've been putting it, Mm -hmm. rather than retire, because I'm going to continue to be part of this station. I am going to be traveling the country, speaking not only about my book, but also about specifically what I believe is the right to die. Mm -hmm. There is so much going on in that field right now, and I hope to be a voice supporting it. And there is a lot going on in that field now, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Before that, you know, I read that your most touching interview was with Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood just before he died. What made that so special? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, as a homemaker for 14 years, I used to save my ironing to the end of the day so that uh, I could sit my young children down in front of the television set Mm -hmm. while I ironed so that I and they could watch and listen to Mr. Rogers. I believe he was one of the great teachers of our time, teaching about kindness and acceptance and acknowledging our differences and yet being a person who reached out, embraced the differences, who taught children what politeness was, who taught them about kindness, who taught them so much. And I loved being with him. You know, I'm sure many people feel the same way. You certainly touched on many medical subjects as well. Is there a particular subject or physician guest that stands out? I would say Dr. Anthony Fauci. He has been, of course, such 
an incredible spokesperson for the National Institutes of Health Mm -hmm. on a variety of diseases, the latest of which uh, has uh, come now to South America, and people are worried that it may come here to the U.S., but he is always so articulate, so ready, and so happy to come on this program Mm -hmm. because he knows he'll really be able to deliver his message. Exactly. That speaks to the power of the Diane Rehm Show. We talked or actually emailed uh, back in 2011 about your late husband, John Rehm, and his severe back pain from stenosis, scoliosis, and arthritis. What was life like for him at that time? Oh, my gosh. He was walking sort of completely bent over at the waist Mm -hmm. when he was walking. He was using a walker, and he had to have someone standing by him at that time, either I or the caregiver who was with him during the day Mm -hmm. until I got home you know, about three in the afternoon. But his pain was excruciating. He was not even comfortable lying down. Wow. I mean, that's how bad it was. Yeah. And, of course, he had had two back operations. One way, way back, I think, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And he was just fine after that. But as he grew older and with the Parkinson's, he increasingly had pain. And the doctor recommended surgery. It was certainly not something I would have wanted for him. Mm -hmm. But he really did feel that that would be good. And for about a year after the surgery, he was pretty good for about a year, Mm -hmm. but then it all came back. I'm so sorry. I mean, I hear that from patients that I see as well. Diane, uh, John had spine surgery or his second spine surgery in 2011. What did they actually do? Oh my gosh. They put in rods They fused, apparently his back was filled with uh, metal rods Mm -hmm. and, you know, everything that they do. Yeah, I mean, in fact, you mentioned in your book that his back and leg pain became even more severe despite the surgery. It really did. I think that when you have back surgery these days, you cannot expect a perfect outcome nor can you necessarily expect years and years free of pain. Mm -hmm. I do think that there are some people that back surgery may help enormously. But John, um, at that point, already had thinning bone structure. Mm -hmm. And... It was it was a hard time. Yeah, I mean, that can often be the hard truth after spine surgery. Uh, Diane, did the surgery give him back any mobility? Yes, it did, but only for about a year. Mm-hmm. And then it just became worse and worse because, you know, after you have back surgery, you have to listen to the doctor about exercise. Mm-hmm. And the problem with exercise for John was that the Parkinson's sort of got in the way of the initiative it takes to do that kind of exercise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think he, he just couldn't do it, even the simplest exercises. That makes it really tough. You know, Diane, when I see patients like John who've had spine surgery, you know, I'll offer medications, uh, certain specific injections in the spine that can be very helpful. Did he try any of these interventions? Well, he tried a couple of back injections. They did absolutely no good. He could not take 
anything stronger than um, Tylenol, Mm -hmm. even though the doctor offered, you know, many, many different prescriptions, but he just couldn't do it. Wow. In retrospect, do you think John should have avoided the spine surgery? Well, you know, I cannot say that definitively because he did have some relief, however brief, Mm -hmm. after the surgery. Now, who knows whether that ultimately made him stronger or weaker. Hard to know. Please don't go away. After this short break, we'll ask Diane to share an intimate portrait of her husband, John, and how they met. I'm Dr. Paul Christo, and you're listening to Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Teva, the leading global pharmaceutical company committed to increasing access to high-quality health care by developing, producing, and marketing affordable generic medicines, as well as innovative and specialty pharmaceuticals. If you have any questions or comments for Dr. Christo, please email him at achesandgains at gmail.com. That's achesandgains at gmail.com. Welcome back. We're here with Diane Rehm, media icon and well-known host of The Diane Rehm Show on National Public Radio. Diane, before we talk about your book, tell us about your husband, John. What was he like? (laughs) When I first met John at the Department of State where he was a lawyer working primarily on international trade issues, Mm -hmm. and I was a secretary. He was working with my boss on a particular trade issue, so he would come into the office a lot. He had very broad shoulders and a very slim waist. He was about six feet tall. Mm -hmm. He had a very loud voice, and I thought to myself, I wonder why his mother didn't teach him better manners <laughs> about talking so loudly. But the other thing was that he was just a man who was interested in so many things, in music, in art, in literature, sports, science, everything. Wow. And I could ask him anything. And if he didn't know the answer, out came the encyclopedia. <laughs> you know, I very much like that 25th wedding anniversary picture of the two of you pictured in your book. Where was that taken? Isn't that beautiful? It's my favorite photograph. At a friend's home, she had a very, very special dinner party for us, and I think there were probably about 30 people there, Mm -hmm. and um, that's my favorite photograph. And I can see why. Uh, Diane, in your most recent book, On My Own, you talk about your husband, John, and his death from Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. You know, most don't realize that pain is reported in up to 46% of patients with Parkinson's disease, and the pain can be burning, tingling, and occur throughout the body or in specific areas of the body, like the joints, the face, and, and the abdomen. The dystonia, that is the continual muscle contraction that's common in Parkinson's disease, can be grueling. Did John have any of this type of pain from Parkinson's disease? Yes, he had continuing pain in his legs. He um, lost the use of his hands and his legs. He could no longer feed himself. He could no longer stand without help. He could not even walk to the bathroom. So, um, It was a combination of pain and loss of muscle. Oh, gosh, that must have been tough. Parkinson's, uh, by the way, is a progressive neurodegenerative disease. It affects typically patients over the age of 40. It was considered for a long time to be a primarily motor system disorder. 
but it's now recognized to be much more complex than that and diverse to include neurological symptoms as well as psychiatric symptoms and non-motor manifestations. It results from a dopamine depletion from an area in the brain called the basal ganglia, and that then causes major disruptions in the connections from that area of the brain to an area called the thalamus and to the motor cortex, leading to the typical Parkinsonian signs. Now, there was a point when John turned the finances over to you because he couldn't keep the numbers straight anymore. And I think many would be surprised to realize that cognitive decline and dysfunction occurs with Parkinson's disease. It does because the doctor had said to me that he felt John was also suffering from Lewy bodies syndrome, which does affect the mind, Mm -hmm. not as severely as Alzheimer's, but it does affect the mind's ability to do simple things like write legibly or compute simple mathematic problems. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was dealing with in his checkbook. John Ream taught me how to balance a checkbook. So for him to then turn it over to me was such an act of courage on his part. I'm sure it was. I've seen some remarkable effects uh, in controlling tremors related to Parkinson's disease from a procedure known as deep brain stimulation. It's like a heart pacemaker, but paces at a higher rate and paces in the deep middle portion of the brain where a structure called the thalamus lies. The thalamus relays sensory and motor signals from the body to higher brain areas. Did John consider this treatment? He did, but we both felt he was too old to undergo that kind of treatment. We had seen two other people with Parkinson's who had done that, Mm -hmm. and they had been adversely affected in their language, in their movement, and both of them were even younger than John. Yeah. You know, deep brain stimulation is FDA approved for advanced Parkinson's disease. It's not approved for pain, but can help with difficult-to-treat neuropathic facial pain, post-stroke pain, and something called brachial plexus avulsion pain, which are the nerves under the arm that have been torn away. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll find out whether John Ream used any Eastern techniques to help reduce his Parkinson's symptoms. I'm Dr. Paul Christo, and you're listening to Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by The Pain Community, a web-based nonprofit created by people living with pain. Check out paincommunity.org for information, references, advocacy tools, and a premium section to securely interact with other members in forums and chat rooms. Boston Scientific, a leader in microelectric implantable technologies used to treat chronic neuropathic pain. Medtronic, a global leader in medical technology, alleviating pain, restoring health, and extending life for millions of people around the world. Visit TameThePain.com to learn about treatment options for chronic pain. Welcome back. Let's now talk about Eastern medicine and Tai Chi specifically. You know, I've had patients with Parkinson's tell me that Tai Chi, which is that ancient Chinese art of slow meditative movement and deep breathing, has helped improve their motor control. Did John consider this particular practice? You know, I saw an article in the Washington Post the other day about that very issue. Mm -hmm. And, of course, with John's limited ability to move or stand, I don't think he would have been able to do that. Yeah. You know, Diane, pain can rob you of your life, but so can Parkinson's. How did Parkinson's... Rob John's life. John used to walk. He'd take a long walk, cooked with me in the kitchen, read the newspaper. He could no longer do those things. Mm-hmm. You know, toward the end, I think he just felt that his life had collapsed yeah. into this bed and that there was no going back 
for him, it just didn't seem as though life had any meaning anymore. I can understand that. Diane, there was a time when John decided to refuse food, water, and medications because the doctor was unable to assist him in his wish to die. What did the doctor say? The doctor said, that is the only thing you can do to bring this about. John looked at me. I looked at him. And I did not know that day what the answer was going to be. Mm -hmm. So I came in the next morning with an album of photographs of John from the time he was a small child until he graduated from Friends Seminary in New York City. Mm -hmm. We stayed on his bed looking at those beautiful, beautiful photographs. And he said, I feel great. And the next day he said, I feel fine. But that night he drifted off and he never woke up again. Mm, What a powerful story. And, And has that made you an activist for the Right to Die movement? Well, not quite, because I am simply advocating for myself and for the individual's right to choose. Mm -hmm. I am connected to or advocating for no organization. Okay. Opioids are critical to dying without pain and are the mainstay pain relievers of the terminal phase of many illnesses. Did John use any opioids at the end of his life? You know, he tried some of uh, the opioids um, and hated them. In the end, all he would take was Tylenol. Wow. So, Diane, how do you deal with your grief? You keep working doing what you do. You keep your respect for life. You regard your loss with understanding and love, Mm -hmm. and you never stop loving, and you never stop feeling that loss. I think you're right. You never quite get over the pain of that loss. You know, you like to draw, paint with watercolors, and cook. What do you see yourself exploring after the Diane Ream show is over? Well, I will uh, continue to be here at the station three days a week. I will be uh, continuing to travel to appear in the play that we've done about Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. I have just bought a new piano, (laughs) and I'm going to go back to self-refreshment mm-hmm. on the piano because I love it and I want to learn to play again. Good for you. Have you thought about how you'd like your own life to end? If I am at home and I have a stroke or a heart attack, I will not call 911. If I am diagnosed with some serious cancer, I will not undergo chemotherapy or radiation. Mm -hmm. I would like to go as simply as possible if I am ready and if I have the courage that John had, I will go somehow in my own way. Mm -hmm. And finally, what would you like us to remember about you? That I had the privilege of having a wonderful husband of 54 years Mm -hmm. and two glorious children. They are my greatest accomplishment. And you can't do much better than that. Diane Ream, it was such a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much. Oh, I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. You are so welcome. And thank you all for listening to this very special Aches and Gains show. I'm Dr. Paul Christo, and you're listening to Aches and Gains. The views and opinions expressed in this radio program are solely the views of Dr. Paul Christo and do not necessarily express the views of this radio station and Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, nor an endorsement by any or all of them of any of its content. This show provides medical information, not advice. 
please consult your personal physician before engaging in any course of treatment or use of any of the techniques or products discussed on this show. Discussion of particular uses of products on this show have not been approved by any of the manufacturers of such products. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. That's paulchristomd.com. Aches and Gains is produced by Tom Blair and Ty Ford. Elsa Langford is the technical consultant and engineer. Dr. Paul Christo is the executive producer. Thanks for listening. This is Aches and Gains with Dr. Paul Christo.